So ever since we first learned about Google Stadia, I feel like there's been more questions than answers involving this service. Google is obviously trying to get rid of the home console and make video games more accessible to anyone on any sort of mobile device. Being able to just instantly play games via cloud services and big servers that they had, in theory and on paper, sounds like a decent enough thing. Will it actually replace the home console? I think many traditionalists would say otherwise, but Google seems to believe that this is the future of gaming and the way that gaming is going to go and the future is now with Google Stadia but today Microsoft talked about their X Cloud service and pretty much just absolutely killed Google Stadia and what Google Stadia is trying to do by honestly just doing it better so taking a look at Google Stadia up until this point it's been a very rocky road the first initial presentation sounded good on paper of course incorporating all of these games onto any sort of device but once we started to learn more about Google Stadia there was more questions than answers you have to think about things like data caps and of course we were wondering well what games are going to actually be available on Google Stadia what sort of pricing would there be what sort of service would this actually be how would the latency impact things when it comes to Google Stadia and playing these games and as we learned more and more about it it honestly got a little bit more disappointing a lot of people were hoping that Google Stadia was going to be the Netflix style service that something like on live was back in 2013 but instead Google has decided to go about it a different route you will basically pay for Full price for these games that are available on the service but be able to play them wherever you go now of course we were introduced to the Google Stadia founders pack that came with a special Chromecast a controller and of course three months of their premium service because there are different premium service tiers when it comes to Google Stadia if you want to play your games in 4k resolution you of course have to have a better service now having things like different service tiers isn't a bad idea but still it's a bit confusing for the average consumer what will I be able to do with my Google Stadia what do you mean mean up to 4k what do you mean up to 1080p what is really indicative of this then of course you have to learn about data caps and things like that because those internet companies are just you know rubbing their hands together very excited to take all of your money by exceeding these data caps and then we learned about Google Stadia's exclusive games or lack thereof because there really is no exclusive games that are very interesting for Google Stadia that have been announced well Google Stadia is launching in about a week's time and we recently learned a lot of things about Google Stadia Stadia that have a lot of people very upset. We learned about the launch lineup of games for Google Stadia and it includes the following games. You have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Destiny 2 The Collection, Guilt, Just Dance 2020, which sends shivers down my spine if you watch my Just Dance Switch video, Kine, Mortal Kombat 11, Red Dead Redemption 2, Samurai Showdown, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, and Thumper. And that's it. That's their launch lineup. No real big exclusive games or anything here guilt is obviously one of the more interesting games on the list but having things like Mortal Kombat 11 Red Dead Redemption 2 Assassin's Creed Odyssey I feel like a lot of people have already played these games and the fact that you could pick up these games and use copies available on your ps4 Xbox one or Nintendo switch in some cases with games like Mortal Kombat 11 why would you want to pay full price to use Google Stadia services and use their servers well I guess you could play it on your cell phone right well that's another problem because Google Stadia isn't launching with all the devices working if you want to play it with your Chromecast you got to have a special Chromecast now there's a Chromecast update coming out but that's not until 2020 many of the features that were promised for Google Stadia as well are not going to be actually launching with Google Stadia which was revealed in an AMA for Google Stadia things like achievement systems there will be no achievement system on day one for Google Stadia stream connect which would allow local multiplayer sessions using different Stadia streams is also not coming until 2020 state share and crowd play which were some of the biggest features talked about with Google Stadia the ability to watch someone stream a game on something like YouTube simply click on a button and then be entered into their game if they allow it or play that game with them or just download that game also isn't coming out until sometime in 2020 so many of the main key features for Google Stadia are not going to be available with Google Stadia then there's also the fact that many people who pre-ordered the founders edition will not be getting their Google Stadia stuff Stuff on launch day it'll be coming eventually it's based on when you ordered it so 
It's been a rocky road for Google Stadia, and many people, myself included, were looking at to see what xCloud was going to be able to do from Microsoft, because that was sort of the answer to Google Stadia from Microsoft, and many people were anticipating what this service was going to be. Well, today, Microsoft revealed a lot more details on what xCloud is going to be all about, and honestly, it just destroys what Google Stadia is trying to do. Now, xCloud is not coming out until 2020, so they have a bit more time than Google Stadia, but when you look at the soft launch, of what Google Stadia is bringing to the table, I think they can afford to wait with this because I feel like the competition aspect isn't necessarily quite there yet. So during Microsoft's XO19 presentation today, they talked more about Project xCloud, and more importantly, they talked about games for Project xCloud, because obviously, any sort of game service, any sort of game console needs video games in order for it to be relevant. And now, while xCloud is not officially launching until 2020, it is available in a preview beta mode right now. And do you know how many games are available in preview beta right now for Project xCloud? There are 50 games available, 50. Compare that to the soft launch of Google Stadia with just 12 games and looking over these list of games there are some heavy hitters on here you have things like Bloodstained Ritual of the Night you have Tekken 7 Soul Calibur 6 Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown you have Devil May Cry 5 you have Madden NFL 20 you have Mutant Year 0 you have Hitman you have Dead Island Definitive Edition you have Sniper Elite 4 Just Cause 4 World of Fantasy Final Fantasy Maxima Ark Survival on Evolved you have WWE 2K20 if you're just a six sadistic person who wants to play that you have games like darksiders 3 but more importantly when it talking about project x cloud you have those microsoft ips behind it as well google stadia does not have the first party catalog of games google stadia has said that first party games exclusive games for google stadia are many many years away but when you're talking about microsoft and you're talking about the xbox brand they have those big games to fall back on and those big games are currently available on project x cloud you have crackdown 3, Forza Horizon 4, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Gears 5, Halo 5 Guardians, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, you have Killer Instinct, Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, Record Definitive Edition, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, and the Bard's Tale 4 Director's Cut. So you have these big marquee titles that Google Stadia does not have when it comes to first party games, but you also have excellent third party support, once again, that you're not quite seeing on Google Stadia yet. Yes, there are a lot of games coming to Google Stadia eventually, but Microsoft is coming out of the gate with these games already available, which makes it a much, much more attractive option when you're talking about wanting to get into game streaming as a service or as a potential secondary thing for your video games needs. What really sets xCloud apart, in my opinion, is just how Microsoft is going about this. Because Microsoft is honestly not trying to replace your home console. And I feel like that's where Google's biggest misstep is with Google Stadia. They want to replace your home console, whereas xCloud is going to be an option. Much like we have seen at pretty much every console generation, especially lately. You've seen all these new things, these new fandangled gimmicks, things like VR, 3D televisions. Oh, this is going to change the way you play games. Of course motion controls this is what the future of gaming is the future of gaming i feel will always be the traditional experience and i think xbox and microsoft somewhat realize that maybe in the future things can change but in the next five years or so i don't foresee that changing so to have something as an option instead of a mandatory thing really makes xcloud stand out amongst the crowd when it comes to the comparisons between xcloud and google stadia but the final nail in the heart of google stadia is that xbox will be incorporated game pass into what xCloud is going to be about and right then and there it just makes Google Stadia pointless because when you incorporate something like game pass into this looking at what the Xbox one brought to the table this generation I feel like Xbox game pass was the best thing that Microsoft did this generation obviously things weren't going very well for the Xbox one so they went with this Xbox game service where now you can play your Xbox games on your PC with a monthly subscription service and have access to a large library of games almost like that Netflix like service that everyone wanted Google Stadia to be but now that Microsoft will be doing something like this now that Microsoft is doing a subscription based service with their project X cloud that will be available on any sort of device that will be available on your mobile phone on your tablet or on your PC that you can use your Xbox one controller you can use a PS4 controller on this pretty much whatever controller you want you can use it you don't need a special controller this is what is going to make 
make xCloud just absolutely dominate Google Stadia because of the fact that you don't have to pay $60 to play a game that released a year ago on another platform that you could pick up for cheaper if you want to get a used copy. So Google Stadia is, is, is done. Like, I don't understand the point of doing Google Stadia at this point. When you see what Microsoft is doing, I really honestly feel like Google Stadia might not be around in like two years. When you look at how Google tends to shift away from different ideas and things that they are doing within their company, think of how many things have gone away since Google has introduced them. Things like Google Plus, Google Video. This was supposed to really transform how people communicated online, but people have their own ways to do that. People are sort of set in their ways and to make them try something new is very, very tricky. And what does Google do when something like Google Plus or Google uh, Video doesn't necessarily work out? They just sort of abandon it. There's a whole laundry list of things that Google has abandoned when it comes to projects. And I honestly feel like Google Stadia is going to be the next victim of this. Because when you compare it to what Project xCloud is bringing to the table, it's a night and day difference. Project xCloud is more designed with the consumer in mind, whereas uh, Google Stadia is trying trying to really change what the consumer thinks when it comes to their video game strategies. And I honestly feel like consumers are not ready to change to something like that. The all digital future will probably be here at some point in time. You've seen a huge change in how people just purchase games, but having an option instead of a mandatory thing is what is going to make Project X Cloud become the standard when it comes to games as a service thing. It's going to be the standard when it comes to streaming your games onto any sort of device, whereas Google Stadia will honestly just be trying to play catch up and they're gonna have to probably change some things maybe reassess what they're doing because by the time they get their exclusives going I feel like Project X Cloud will be so far ahead in advance that Google Stadia just won't have a chance so wow what a crazy thing you know when you thought that Google Stadia couldn't get any worse it somehow has managed to get worse so if you are a Google Stadia founder pack member you know at least it'll make an interesting conversation piece when people come over to your house when people People say, you know, well, what is this? What is this weird controller and this weird Chromecast? And you can say, oh, well, this was when Google tried to enter the video game marketplace and, well, they, they just didn't really know what they were doing. So that is my analysis on how Microsoft just managed to kill Google Stadia with really one presentation. So let me know in the comments section down below how you feel about this, how you feel about game streaming as a whole, and of course, what you think the future of Google Stadia is, if there is a future for Google Stadia, because as I'm seeing things right now, it's Stadia's got it's got no chance no chance in hell and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out other videos on the channel and as always i will catch you guys on the next video later